everyone welcome to another exciting edition of words images and worlds so glad on this episode to be talking with comics creator jordan thomas i'll mention a couple of titles here at the beginning and then of course we can we can roam around as well i was going to mention weird work which is right there over your shoulder uh as well as frank at home on the farm being one of your books uh and you shared several with me um since we scheduled the interview i'll mention quarantine being one of those uh, mugshots, sins of the father, and uh, we'll we'll of course talk about others as well. So uh, that was a brief intro, but hopefully I, I hit some of the highlights. And thank you so much for jumping in and joining. No problem. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. My pleasure. Uh, thanks for saying yes. And so I, I think maybe the first question is sort of my English teacher question, which is the the connection to storytelling. How did you get connected to the written word and how did you decide comics was the place where you wanted to create and share stories? Sure. Um, so I've definitely always loved stories. Like as a young kid, I was super into all kinds of films. I remember staying up till like the early hours to watch like Marx brothers films on TV with my dad falling asleep on the sofa yeah. and him having to watch Akira with me and read all the subtitles because I was too young to to fully be able to to read all the subtitles with Akira um and I was always a big reader and I got really into um collecting the like trading cards of comics when I was really young so my my intro to the comic book world was um collecting like the Marvel and DC and Spawn and and different mm -hmm. trading card sets and from there, kind of graduated into reading the comics. And I, of course, I was the right age for things like the X-Men animated series, the Batman animated series. Mm -hmm. so, so I actually um, studied script writing for film and TV at university. And that's a very stressful world, the, the film world. Like it takes so many people and so much money even to just do like short films. Right. Um, and so, so kind of one day I started to to see some friends who were using Kickstarter to make comic books. And yeah, I thought, you know, I'd, I'd give that a go. I found a great artist, Clark Bint. Um, and the first thing that, that I wrote and that we did together was Frank at home on the farm, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. you, which you mentioned. And yeah, I just love comics because just you and, our, and an artist, you can get together and just create anything like it's the limits uh, that it's so kind of limitless compared to, other mediums that require a lot more um investment in terms of film and tv and and i love how yeah just you and a small team can get together and, and make like amazing stories together in comics yeah, yeah well and it sounds like we have a lot of the same stories as far as um development and and ideas because i was also a batman animated series fan uh I was also a fan of Spawn and the trading cards and got introduced to so many characters and worlds through trading cards. Mm -hmm. uh, very often I wouldn't meet a character in a comic. I wouldn't see a comic uh, until years later after I discovered them on some trading card. So uh, it sounds like we have similar paths in that way, at least. Um, now, you, you create stories that are crime oriented at times that are also um, frightening at other times and so i'm curious about what what draws you in to a particular story type um yeah I, I don't know exactly how i decide what i'm going to work on actually it's interesting in the world of comics at the moment there's definitely you're but as i've moved from making my own things so i guess like the, the books i did on kickstarter they were there was horror, there was crime, there was science fiction. Uh, and I guess those were very much like, what did I want to do at that moment in time? Mm -hmm. Whereas now that I'm working with publishers, it does come down to you obviously have to get the pitch accepted. And uh, I've got lots of pitches that are kind of historical, historically set, like things at the beginning of cinema, mm -hmm. things in um, Puritan villages in the new America. Uh, but it does seem that the editors believe that it's easier to sell like science fiction mashed mm. with a Western, like mm. uh, the man from maybe the most, most recent series I had out. So mm -hmm. definitely I'm kind of interested quite widely, but I have found myself in recent times leaning towards wanting to combine real events with 
a fictionalized story. So I find that connection of being able to take like a moment in time and and build a story within it very interesting. But, but yeah, definitely um, I've always loved like crime. Tonight I'm going to see Goodfellas at the cinema um, near where I am. And so I always love Scorsese films and, and everything crime related. But uh, yeah, I'm, pr I'm pretty kind of wide in my interests and, it, and it's definitely fun to do different types of stories. And also the artist I'm going to work with will dictate a little bit what type of story I'm going to tell. Like I've done a couple of books with Shaky Kane, who is a, an artist who's been around in the UK for years and years working with 2000 AD. And then he's done some books at Image. But he has a very kind of pop art, bright, um, a little bit Michael Red in style. So when I know I'm going to write for Shaky, I want to have kind of, I want it to be fun. I want it to be like The Man From Maybe was a sci-fi Western we did together, but there's like dinosaur astronauts who appear and all the characters are kind of larger than life. And I want to have very um, big set pieces for him to really get his teeth into. Whereas maybe if I work with an artist who's more about the acting of the characters and can do quieter moments, then maybe I'll do something like a crime book that's kind of set in lots of shadow filled rooms and, um, mm -hmm. and relies a little bit more on the acting. So definitely in comics, you have to think about who your collaborator is as well. Yeah, absolutely. And I was going to ask about some of those positive collaborations. So it's it's great to hear that and how you sort of think through the style of the collaborator that you're working with. Yeah, I think this, I mean, it's so important in comics. Like if I was to do a really kind of real life set, like a like something that's a bit more like a drama set with lots of talking heads, then Shaky Kane wouldn't probably be the right artist for that because you're not using their his full skill set. So so definitely like you you need the artist to be engaged with what you're doing. Like obviously, you know, if money's involved, people will, will kind of take on the jobs that are available. But I think you come out with a much better final story if you found something that inspires the artist as much as it inspires yourself. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I mean, that's that's part of the beauty of comics is that sense of collaboration that comes through. Um, a, as a writer, w what is your process like? Are there particular um, places that you go or things that you do to sort of get in a, a creative space? Do I find that it's the ideas that keep coming back to me are the ones that I tend to settle on. Like I have a lot of different ideas for things, but when one idea keeps kind of coming back and I keep thinking of new characters or moments for the story then I tend to maybe I'll make a note about what the story is but I'll build a lot of it in my head before actually sitting down to write so the process of writing normally doesn't take me that long because maybe I've been thinking about the story for for six eight weeks before kind of putting all the pieces together so that the writing is really just kind of getting it down but I've already envisioned a lot of it in my head but definitely um the, so I live in Spain. I'm English, but I live in Valencia in Spain. And mm -hmm. um, I've got a nice gym here that has like a swimming pool on the roof. And that's definitely one of my kind of favorite places for thinking through like a, a tough point in a story. If I'm struggling to maybe, you know, get through that tough middle section of a story, then going for a nice half an hour swim tends to be a, a good way to kind of loosen some of those ideas. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um... Yeah, just thinking about, uh, I heard a quote once that said, thinking about writing is writing. So I think that's the best uh, story that I've had to sort of go with that quote is putting the plot together uh, at the swimming pool. I, I love that. Yeah, yeah. I think um, people doubt it a bit, like when you try and convince them, like, no, I am working, like when I'm, <laughs> like, uh, when it looks like I only maybe sit down and write for like three hours a day. It's like, no, there's a lot more, there's a lot more time spent on it than that, I promise. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and for what it is worth, I would love to see a comic that is set at sort of like the beginning of film, uh, bringing together your your university studies as well. You were talking about some of those pitches and uh, mm -hmm. the historical pieces and colonial uh, America and things like that. So uh, I hope to see a range of work and hope that mm -hmm. uh, publishers will explore that. Yeah, fingers crossed. I think maybe if, you know, if I can get on Batman for a bit or something, then it tends <laughs> to get a bit easier. You know, you like Scott yeah. Snyder's doing his um, Barnstormers book, which mm -hmm. is probably a pitch you wouldn't be able to get through as a 
a new writer. But yeah, once you've done a couple of years on Batman, then these things can get a bit easier. Yeah, yeah. I would love to see what you would do with a character like Batman too, as well. So, just just in case the DC folks are listening, as yeah. as I'm sure they do. As I'm sure. Yeah, they let's do. hope so. <laughs> um, so I always like to ask about those things that are ahead. And I know that uh, people can't always talk about those because of NDAs and the process, but uh, any particular collaborations that you're excited about sharing about or upcoming works or uh, ideas that have your creative focus at the moment? Uh, so I've got one series that hasn't been announced yet, but that we're really far along with the work for. It's going to be a four issue series uh, working with one of my best friends. And um, it's a crime book. And he's on. He's just finished the third issue, so that's not been announced yet. But that uh, that one's going to be really exciting because it's we've been friends since we were about eleven years old. So so it's really fun working together in that way. But I've also set it around near where we grew up in the in the city, kind of closest to us, where we spent a lot of time. So there's a lot of actual like real life locations in there. And historically, I have a bit of um, like my father was in prison for a few years whilst I was a teenager. So I've got some kind of experience of kind of having seen some of that world. And there's bits like where a character goes to visit someone in prison. And like I've done, I've done that myself. So I know how, what that can be like. Um, so, yeah, I'm really excited for that to come out. Uh, that should be announced in late January, early February with the probably the first issue to come out kind of in the May time. So that'll be really exciting. And then I've also signed up another series, which I can't really talk about yet, but it's going to be the longest thing that I've written. And um, yeah, I think there's some really interesting themes in that one around um, a kind of a, I guess what I can say about it is that the idea kind of sparks from a infertility pandemic. So people um, are not being able to have children and how that kind of messes up society when you get a whole generation that kind of gets really slimmed down um so yeah i, I think uh they're, they're going to be two very different stories so it'll be fun having them both kind of coming out around the same time yeah yeah no, and again i love the the creativity that you bring and uh definitely someone that works across types of stories which i always appreciate i always enjoy a, a writer that takes on multiple worlds multiple ways of storytelling so uh sending appreciation for that um, thank you and uh last official question and then we can hit anything that we might have missed and that is uh, of course places where people can go social media websites um conventions things of that nature if they want to sort of follow up and find out more about what you're creating uh so on twitter i'm jordan underscore j underscore thomas on instagram i'm ampersand1988 like the monkey out of why the last man mm -hmm. um and then i also have a Substack called burnt barn business so that can you can get a bit more longer form information there but i have been setting up some convention appearances so i'm planning to go to c2e2 in chicago um next it's the end of april i believe which is really exciting so i've never been to chicago before mm -hmm. and that's meant to be a really cool convention so i'm looking forward to that hopefully um We'll do a few signings and I'll have um, maybe some uh, like talks with uh, at, like panel appearances with the different publishers that I'm working with. And then I also have a couple of conventions in the UK in, uh, in May, one in London and one in Portsmouth, which is where all the, all the ships, all the Navy goes from in England with the lots of uh, big famous ships like the HMS victory from, um, Admiral Nelson ship. Uh, so yeah, no, that should be that should be cool. Wonderful, wonderful. And I'll also mention uh, just appreciation for Oni Press. Um, and I know Manfred maybe you mentioned has a wonderful visual appeal to it, and, and wonderful work from you as well. So uh, just sharing that out back again so that folks can connect with that work as well as uh, the work that you're currently displaying behind you as well. Yeah, no, I mean, I think um, The Man from Maybe is probably like the most fun comic I've ever written. Mm -hmm. Like it's dystopian, but it's kind of dystopian in a very, in like uh, big, and it's not like The Road, you know, it's not Cormac McCarthy dystopian. <laughs> it's uh, 
yeah there's no like eating babies or anything in there it's um it's a kind of fun dystopia so i kind of think of it as like the good the bad and the ugly meets mad max with some raiders of the lost ark in there as these kind of disparate groups of people are all kind of converging chasing this one item so yeah i think anyone who likes westerns or adventure or um science fiction they should be uh they should be fans of that the final issue actually came out this week as of recording so um nice, nice. i think the the trade collection should probably be out in february march time i would guess and uh weird work as well the trade collection from image for weird work which is a sci-fi noir detective kind of murder mystery that's um coming out february 7th so you know if, uh, you can get a lot of me and shaky working together in a in early 2024 love it love it well well jordan thank you so much did we miss anything that you want to make sure to mention before we conclude no uh, i don't think so yeah just basically you can cut you can get most of my comics for review or local comic shop or from all the usual places like amazon frank at home on the farm is still available in the collected edition that's more like um, a horror book the shining on a on a farm is how i mm -hmm. think of that one and yeah so if if people are interested in checking anything out it's quite easy to to grab some of the collected editions of the work fantastic well glad to have you back anytime and thank you so much for the time and the work cool brilliant thanks for having me jason thank you